What's going on guys? Uh, this is Connor here and I've got a review of Duke Nukem Forever here for you today. Uh, just a couple of things I want to talk about before I get into the review. A um, couple of things I need to ask. Firstly is the new intro. I just, I, I just need some opinions on it. Is it too long? Because I kind of think it might be too long, you know. <laughs> 15 seconds is a bit dragged out, but I don't know, you, you can tell me. Um, I'm also thinking of just le dropping it, not not dropping it, but maybe just cutting out and leaving like the last four seconds in. But anyway, you can tell me about that in the comments. Another thing is Minecraft. Um, I was thinking of doing a Minecraft series. I don't know, maybe like one or two episodes a week, nothing too intense because I know everyone's sub boxes always gets flooded with minecraft and i was thinking of that when 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 uh, considering making it but let me know if you want to see minecraft for me because it's something i'd be interested in but i'm not too sure that you'd be interested in it because literally everyone does minecraft and i understand that let me know in the comments guys so um yeah i'll get stuck into this review now presentation so after being in development for 12 years, you think a video game would have a fairly polished look. Duke Nukem lacked this polish. A game that's mainly focused on the single player aspect needs to be immersive from the very start. However, when a player starts a new campaign, they are greeted by a loading screen and a very brief opening theme and a Duke Nukem Forever logo. It made me feel like the game was just thrown together to get it onto shelves and wasn't given the care it deserved during development. It certainly makes you wonder what has been going on for the last 12 years in this project. The whole game feels kinda empty. From a quick glance through all the menus and options available to you, you'd feel slightly let down that there isn't more packed into this title. One thing that will please some players is My Digs, and that's basically at your own virtual, virtual penthouse, where you can fill it up with various items you've earned from progressing in multiplayer. Also, after beating the game once, some new extras will unlock in the main menu. These include concept art, photos from the development, and a Duke soundboard. These are pretty cool, but will only keep you occupied for 10 to 15 minutes. Gameplay. This is an area I was expecting to be simple and fun. After all, this is a Duke Nukem game, and I didn't expect Gearbox to adapt to the modern day shooter where complex moves and techniques are brought into a first person shooter game. The controls are easy to learn and get used to. You have a gun, some explosives, beer and steroids. <laughs> the latter two are rarely used in my playthrough though. The guns aren't anything special either. There's a shotgun, a ripper, which is a machine gun, a rail gun, which is like a sniper rifle, and a couple of quirky fantasy guns like the shrink ray or the freeze ray. These are all simple to use. The gameplay never felt monotonous, and albeit simple, it added to the enjoyment as I never felt stressed or overwhelmed by a vast library of attacks I could use. The enemies themselves were tough, and that's only on regular difficulty. If they were any easier though, it could have been a huge downfall for this game, as I got a mi minor fe feeling of accomplishment when I passed the difficult section of killing enemies. Graphics and audio. Before I say anything about the game's graphics, let's just be clear that this game has been through several engines and developers, so I think everyone should cut some slack for Gearbox and not criticise the graphics of this game too much. Yes, the visuals are dated and it's not exactly groundbreaking as promised, but however, there's nothing really to complain about. I played this on PC and I played at 60fps constantly, no hiccups or graphical glitches. <laughs> While I can't say I was particularly impressed by the art style, Gearbox showed what they could achieve with their heavily modified Unreal Engine in the first level of the game, with the remake of the boss fight in the football stadium. But the rest of the le levels in the game unfortunately just couldn't follow up. In terms of audio, I found the soundtrack very dull and boring, and at some points it made you feel like you were playing a child's game. The voice acting was mediocre, but Duke still delivered some of his classic one-liners, as one would expect. Replay value. Um, the first thing I'll say here is, is this game worth 50 quid? In my honest opinion, no. No, it isn't. I completed the campaign on normal difficulty in around 9 hours, which in fairness is a decent length for a campaign in a first-person shooter game, but 
you could double that time if you went back and got all the collectibles and you did it on the toughest difficulty but most players won't bother doing this if they were disappointing with the core game there are a couple um there are a couple of incentives to keep people playing such as the multiplayer the particular style of the multiplayer is very nostalgic it kind of reminded me of something you and a friend would play on a split screen in a much older game unfortunately the eight player online multiplayer completely fails at following this old stuff fashion style i can never get into it the maps are poorly designed and the best player is basically whoever can get to the devastator first and it leaves you feeling kind of cheated when you're being when you're uh when you're being destroyed the second you spawn when you only have an m1911 the only perk to playing this is ranking up and in turn you'll earn items for duke's crib <laughs> inverted commas there uh, the whole game though is definitely worth the 35 quid i paid for it though it's more of a rent than a buy i'd say so the verdict um it's a game i wasn't disappointed with but it wasn't something that particularly impressed me the campaign for the most part was fun albeit lacking the immersive experience immersive experience one should expect from a game like this it doesn't live up to the game uh it doesn't live up, sorry it doesn't live up to the name of duke nukem and my final fo score for this game is 68 out of 100 <laughs> very precise score there but yeah that's my score for duke nukem forever um just before I wrap it up, I just want to remind you, please comment on this and tell me about what you think of my intro. And also, please tell me what you think of the Minecraft idea. Thanks very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you later.